No intro this time. Let's get to the point. So you want to add some buttons on your mobile game to get to some stuffs in your game, right? So let's get started. Okay, let's start by creating some buttons. So I'm going to start with creating button for tab functionality, and later in this video we're going to look on the hold functionality. Before starting this video, I'm going to tell you like I'm going to tell you the most easiest way you can do this. I'm not going to go in depth with this new input systems. I'm not going to do anything complicated. I do try to make the thing as easiest as it's possible so you can learn easily. And after that, and and my main is thing is to take is to aim on how you can take the inputs, not how you can implement and use the inputs in your game. Just how you can take those inputs, right? And if you take those input, you all you need to do is to read that input and how you can how you will read this input is depends on you and depend on your game. So it as far if I do something here, it may be different on your thing sites and but I try to keep things in a generalized form. So let's start by creating some buttons. So we need a button, so we're going to be UI and create a button here. Uh, it's asking about TMP import and not the need need that because basically I'm going to delete this stuff. Okay. and let's name it attack hold so in my case maybe it's the attack button for example let's take this is an attack button and this is attack button for tap purpose okay so this is a tap button so when i click on tap it's some do some small attack right do we need a good source image so let's drag and drop a flat light at four i just take this image from the kenya cisco on screen six you can take down it from and give the link in the description after doing this, let's reposition it somewhere in the good place. Okay, I think this place looks great on him. Here, then we need to add a new component. Is that going to be on screen button? Now we have a button uh, in button component. We have on click, but this is for the UI purpose. We need a button for our player that is not really a UI, but this is this contain the whole whole logic inside it. So on click does not going to work in this game. So we just go to add component and we're going to choose the on screen button. You can search on screen button and get it. Here we need to give a control path. Uh, control path going to be uh, input. So game path and we'll choose the north in this case. Okay and so we have give some created on screen button. We now we need to connect this button to here in the play from player action. So let's get an action. Let's name it attack. Uh, this is going to be tap working on a first tab functionality so I'm just focusing on the tab now so attack tab and make sure the action tab is going to be button or it does not going to work as a tab functionality then I'm going to give these some bindings so let's give path and give button not this button not and this button going to be same or else it's not going to work this is how we set up our attack tab but action now let's look how we can seek this tab functionality some code and some do some stuff so let's open up our input manager this input manager was attached to my player if you want to see we have a player here and we have attached this input manager here you can do the whole stuff in your attack script or any script that is taking input you can do this anywhere but I prefer to have a separate script that goes responsible for the input manager so we start by public void create a normal function like this but when you came in the naming part, we're going to type on this one important, and then we're going to write the name of the um, action. This time we have attack tab, and then we're going to be just uh, posting as a normal functions. So this is how we're going to create a function. You need to uh, make sure double check whether it is right or not. So we have attack tab, right? It's name actually it's name type so attack tab great so public void attack tab and here we're going to give some message so I'm type print we're going to print some message here like something happens okay and now when I print this message you need to make sure uh, have an eye on my console so you, you will understand better so let's open a console window and we'll do the size give the size you can see it here now I'm going to play just make sure I your eyes keep your eyes here and number of time this message prints so I click on this button and see we have got a message something happened it's time number of times this print is one so it's mean this function is executing is one time and which is great which is great for the tab purpose so this is how you set up, set up in your attack or sorry tab functionality in your with on screen buttons you have 
so in turn we have done with the tab functionality if you wanted to do some actual attack so you need to just call that your attack function from here and all done you need to first access your attack script and from that you need to access your attack functions and it's going to do the same as it did so now let's start with the uh, whole functionality so first get in the button we need another button i'm not going to do the same thing though but it's going to make some confusion for you just get duplicate and this time i'm going to just name it hold attack button hold maybe let's assume this is my charging something like that charging type of button so we have some everything going to the same let's change this icon to flat light 35 okay b and let's reposition him somewhere great place okay i think this place looks great on him then in on, on stream button we need to give an end the control pair or else it's not going to work let's give a um, south button in this case and let's start to create a duplicate of this two okay let's create a duplicate and let's rename it something like attack hold and let's give the button tab to south seem it is same as it is in case this and let's give this action time to now value you can choose a pass through but i go with the value and control tab to you can go with any for now okay so we set up the our attack hole now we need to take this input from the scripts now one more thing like uh, they have a call interaction which is whole multi tab press and slow tap tap but i'm not going to use those interactions because i think this makes things more complicated I think for my case, I think they are a little bit complicated to set up. So I'll just move with this basic method of doing so. And basically want that like we did in our old input system, like something like that. Like how long the button is pressed. We did in our old input system. So if great way you can display, you can connect your logic with your old input system. If you ever use that old input system, so you can connect your logic through with that. So you will go is comfortably with that. So let's be called attack hold and now let's open the script and try to take this attack hold. Now for showing this purpose, I'm going to create a boolean. So this way we're going to look easily because in our own input system, this also retains some kind of bool. Okay, so that is pressed or not something like bool and how long is press? Uh, is it pressing? It's currently pressed or not? It's released or not? So just replace everything in a boolean. So I'm going to also create a boolean. So control. So let's name it is attack button hold let's name this name and let's get a new function public wide and let's name it on on and then name of that in this case we have attack hold uh hold let's double check it the name again attack and hold good it's match and this time we're going to give some parameters input value Let's name it input and the curly bracket. Now we are going to make this attack hold button is equal to input dot get load. Now since this is the type value, it's going to return some numeric value, not true and false. So in order to convert this return float value in the boolean, we need to using a system namespace. So Let's go with the convert in system basically there's a one class called convert that has a fun function called to bool to boolean that convert anything to the boolean depending on is what you give. So this convert our float in the boolean if this float is one or anything one but not zero this is going to be true. But if zero then it's going to be written false with but anything other than zero is going to be always true. Maybe it's minus one zero 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 point one we always going to return true so this is called our attack so technically our attack hold functionality is now set up so like if i want to show you we go back to unity and go to shift if you keep an out on this attack hold i just increase the size of so you can see easily just keep your out eye on this attack hold so if we i press the button b it's become true and false but as soon as i started holding it it's still going to be a true until i release it 
so as I holding is become true but as soon as I release it is become false so it's like if you just uh, add this little bit of your knowledge of your programming you can create a whole functionality out of it okay and so this is how it works so and that's the simple it is just use your little mind or uh, use your brain and you can come with a great whole functionality you don't even need to use interactions something else that make your code a little more complicated I think but I don't know even if make in I uh, don't know about too much about interactions but I think this way is more greater easier to learn okay but before ending this video I'm going to show you one small example of the attack tab that I created so basically I'm not doing anything but I have my attack script this is going to have some function that a public function makes it going to publish so you can access outside and going to instantiate this projectile and then going to add some force to it okay and the force mode is going to be impulse then in the input manager script I am just going to just call that function from okay so get component attack down to some attack just call this function every time when I click on it by pressing on tab attack when I click on the E button in the unity if I put everything in the right place and try to play if I play it you can see if I click on the E button it started attacking the button so like it's working as you expected right you can just click how many times doesn't matter how longer you hold it doesn't matter it you just need to click it it's worked okay so if you think is this video make uh, if you think that this video is very helpful to you and you think that it just makes it very easy so you can subscribe to my channel and if you want to support more you can support me on my coffee page it's really helped me a lot if you support some amount of money and it's coming and it's motivate to make me more like videos like this all my I try to do is to make this new input system more easier so you can easily migrate from old input system to new input system without being, without being uh, any problem because when I started uh, migrating from old input system to new input system it's really a become a hustle because after too many stuffs here and no proper documentation like if you ever try to open a unique documentation I, I don't know if you ever understand or not but in my case I didn't understand what they are saying what they are trying to tell us in your documents I didn't understand it and they are the main talk uh, tutorials explain things in very in-depth I say it's not interesting that in-depth that that's I think now I don't able to understand many things because they because I'm trying to find the way that is more easier to do than doing like something complicated so I'm just and with that experiment just come out with that uh, very easier way of doing this stuff with this matter so I hope you like this and we'll meet you next video for till then thanks for watching so bye have a nice day and I will meet you next video